Hey everybody, it's Aiden here once again and welcome to a joint Assetto Corsa and R Factor 2 video today as I'm doing a track guide. Now this track guide is something that I hope to do more often if the demand is out there, but I thought as there are no videos currently out there for this kind of thing, well, at least not for a V8 supercar, I'd do a track guide to my favourite circuit on the planet, Mount Panorama, Bathurst. This place is as Aussie as the Backyard Barbie. Now at 6.2k or 4 miles long, Bathurst length is around the same as Spa in Belgium. And while us Europeans rave about the historic tracks like Silverstone, Brands Hatch, Spa, Monza and the Nordschleife, Bathurst, at least for me, is the ultimate driver's track. Reason being, aside from Monaco, I can't think of another track that demands 100% commitment and concentration for the entirety of the race. However, unlike Monaco, you can actually overtake here. Okay, the Nordschleife has its length, but the race at Bathurst every October stops the Australian nation. It's the FA Cup Final, the season finale of Game of Thrones, the Olympic 100m Final and the Super Bowl combined. So what I have planned here is I will do a fly around of the circuit in Assetto Corsa because I can't get to get it to work in R-Factor 2 the way I want it to and then drive around in a streetcar in R-Factor 2 to get an idea of what it looks like to the driver and then we'll blast out a lap in a V8 supercar so you can see what it all looks like when you manage to get it all hooked up properly. So let's get started and I hope you learned something new here today. Okay then, so we currently find ourselves on the start finish straight, and this is where you um, well, you start and finish. How informative. But the key here for a good lap time is to maximise your exit from the final corner, which you can just see on the left hand side, and your entry into the first corner, because it's all about entry and exit in a V8 supercar. Well, it's more about the exit than the actual entry in a V8 supercar, and I'll explain it a little bit more. You don't need to worry about anything else, to be honest, as this section is over so quickly you don't really have any time to worry about anything. Moving along a bit, we end up at Hell Corner, which is Turn 1. And it's not named for the amount of Turn 1 carnage fests that typically happen in the Bathurst 1000, but it's because there used to be a tree stump on the inside. Bikers that got too close and hit it were said to be doomed to death, which I, I don't really understand, but oh well. Now the key here is to brake early at either on or slightly before this 100m board that you can just see on the right hand side of the screen. Turn in, if I move the camera forward, so you, you've hit the brakes and then you want to turn in, grab some of the kerb on the inside, get on the power as you get to the apex or just as you click the apex, excuse me, and run the car out onto this kerb on the outside, even using the AstroTurf if you need to, and then just run along the kerb, let it drop off onto this apron on the right hand side. You then want to sort of bring the car back across and you want to be on the left hand side of the track as you reach this access road. Now this access road leads back into the paddock, but you want to be on the left hand side maximum here because we're going to be on mountain straight and it isn't totally flat. So looking at mountain straight you can see it's not exactly flat and it's a lot lumpier than it looks on the telly. Now in the old days before aerodynamics were the, the done thing, Drivers had to lift going over this little hump because they were getting air, much like at the uh, the Flugplatz on the Nürburgring. And many bikers that forgot to lift in the Easter Classic were being launched and having massive crashes because they had neither the weight or downforce to keep the bike on the road. And I haven't actually tried this in an old Lotus or a Brabham around here, and I think I probably should at some point. Now in a modern vehicle, supercar or a GT car, you don't need to worry about anything, just keep your foot buried. You also want to take a nice, big, deep breath and prepare yourself for what's to come because this is pretty much the end of the easy part. Now at the end of the straight, we can just see over the crest of the hill, Griffin's Bend. Moving up, we've reached turn two, Griffin's Bend. We can actually break a lot later here than you think because it's slightly uphill and it's banked. Now the main problem is, at least on the R Factor 2 version of the track, there is a massive bump going in and you'll know it when you've hit it. You'll have to break after that bump. Not on, not before, after. If you brake on or before, you'll unsettle the car and you're more likely to spear into the end of this tyre wall than you are to actually go through the corner. Now I take this corner in third gear in a V8 supercar because of the way I have the car set up and I don't actually pull sixth on mountain straight unless I'm on low fuel. Now you'll see here that the corner is banked and that helps the turn in, but try not to overshoot the corner because if you overshoot the banking, you're actually likely to be pulled uh, left into the wall uh, rather than going around it. But go with what works best for you in, in terms of getting the, uh, the, the car through. 
Now, moving around the corner, you don't want to get on the curb. You sort of just want to follow. Oops, oops excuse me. Just want to follow the the rubber line around, and as you oops, as you get to the exit of the corner, run along here. Now it's just a it's part of the the driveway for whatever's up here, but you can use all of this apron to get the uh, the the slingshot up the rest of the hill. Now we're going up another small incline towards the cutting. Once you're clear of the runoff going through Griffins, you want to bring the car over to the right-hand side, probably latest where these Michelin boards are. Now this works differently for different versions of the track, but you can sort of apply it to every single one. Now you want to be on the right-hand side because we want to treat turn three, where this coat tire thing is, we want to treat this corner like it's not even a corner. We want to straight line the run to the cutting as much as we possibly can. So we want to sort of give a little bit of brake, drag it through, change down the gears, and as soon as you get the car straight about here, that's when you apply it more brake and start to get the car slowed up for the cutting, which is where those liquid molly uh, ad boards are. And while this coat tire and Fujitsu board continues around to the left, you want to make your the car go more to the right. It is okay to get it on this side of the, uh, the the white lines here and then just maximize your turn in for the cutting. On the outside, you can take it all the way up to the wall like Scott McLaughlin did on his uh, 203 lap round here, but I tend to keep it in the middle uh, on a hot lap, but in the race, I will run it out to the, uh, to the wall just to save on the tire load. Now, if you haven't gathered by now, uh, how to drive a V8 supercar, you want to get the power on early, uh, but try not to get the left tyre over the white line on the inside because you're more likely to climb the car off the inside of the wall than you are off, uh, than actually getting around the corner because it's a right-hand drive car. It's also one line through here, so be patient in a race and keep it single file. If someone goes wide, take the opportunity, go through, but try not to barge your way through because you'll just clog the track like Greg Murphy and Marcus Ambrose did. Once on the other side, well, we can see the sort of incline we've got here. If I just make the camera go down a bit, you can see the incline. It's a one in six. And you want to, uh, like I say, exit the cutting in the middle of the track uh, because of the wall of death on the outside that Scotty Mac has actually hit uh, before. So, uh, I'm just trying to read the script here. So we want a short shift from second into third about here just tame the wheel spin, keep it to the middle, hug the inside, and now we're aiming for this mil uh, sorry, Wilson security ad board on the left hand side. Keep the car as far left as you possibly can, and there's a bump sort of around here. It doesn't show up on the set of course version of the track, but there's a bump there that you just want to keep an eye out for, especially if you're on old rubber, and come up here. We're in third, keep it in third, use the curb, here, bring the car to the outside. Now this, this can be taken flat. It can be done flat in a V8 supercar in R Factor 2. Uh, it does require a well rubbered in track, but it's possible, so mid-race you can actually do it. So for this next section, the next main thing that it takes us from Reed Park through to Solomon Park and up to McPhillamy is bravery. Treat the whole thing like you treat the triple apex left-hander at Istanbul, as if it was all one big left-hander. And if you only, if you go through here flat, though, you'll just wreck your car. As we come through the other side of this left-hander, you'll notice that the track drops away. I'm following the racing line as best I can here. You can see it drops away, and you can't see anything, but you just got to put your trust in downforce, your tyres, and your driving ability. So you come over the crest of the hill, putting a lot of load on the on the right-hand side. And then you want to bring it up to this wall here because we've got the grate. Now you may remember if you've seen my mini track guide from the story time episode I did on the 1992 Bathurst 1000, the grate is used as a turning marker to get you through this next left-hander at Solomon Park. So get as close to this wall as you possibly can uh, to maximise your turning speed. Give a lift or a slightest dab of brake to generate some turning, but only do so once this grate has disappeared from you and been obscured from your bonnet. And it will often get referred to as that bloody great because at this point of the track, which is, as you can see, starting to even out now, you're getting suspension compression heavily loading up the right front tire and you'll hear it screaming as you go through. 
But why is it screaming? Not only is it being heavily loaded up, but the suspension compression is actually making the tyre go up into the roll cage and is rubbing on the inside of the wheel arch, so it's being abused in any way you can imagine. You might even hear it when we go for a full hot lap later. You'll be doing about 190 clicks through here, and you'll be less than 6 inches from this wall if you are fully committed. So we've got through Salmon Park, we're looking at the exit of Salmon Park, we're on the power again, we're heading into McPhillamy. So we're almost at the highest point of the circuit. You're going to be in fourth gear coming out of this corner and going around 200 to 205 kilometers an hour. Now if we turn around, you can see that there's another bump in the track, or another hump rather than a bump in the track, and the track falls away to the left. And the other thing is, you don't really want to be on this curb. You can use it, and if you do end up on it, don't pull off it as soon as you're on it. You want to keep on going, just let the car drop off the other side and then get to the left-hand side of the white line. Coming up a little bit further, you don't want to be on this curb. Definitely don't want to be on this curb, because as soon as this curb finishes, that's where you want to start turning in. Turn in, dab a brake just to keep the, uh, the car going, hug the wall, you don't have to use the curb but you can bring it to the outside. Try not to rely on using this exit curb because, well, gravel. It's, 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 it's a bitch. Don't, don't, don't rely on it. Now before 1981, this gravel trap was not here. They added it because of the blockage on lap 120 in the 1981 race that caused the race to be abandoned. The first of only two times it's happened. The 1992 rainstorm caused the other, which I covered in my aforementioned Storytime series. Now we're heading into the holy shit moment. Where's the track gone? Is this like that Thelma and Louise bit where they jump into the canyon at the end? Oh, sorry. Spoilers. No, I haven't seen it either. But not really. Uh, this is Skyline, and this is where you stop pretending to be Greg Murphy and you become Michael fucking Flatley. On your qualifying laps or your attempts to match or beat Scott McLaughlin, this is where you're going to gain or lose most of your time. Gain because you've got the braking exactly right, and if you're braking after this Bentley Bridge, you might as well just cut straight across this uh, runoff area because you're not going to you're not going to make it. And lose because you've locked your rears and ended up falling down the side of the mountain. And yes, I've actually done this in an LMP2. Uh, just the other week, actually, I locked the rears, speared off to the right, ended up smacking the wall where that Marshall's post is, and ended up falling down the side of the mountain. Now getting through here quickly takes longer to describe than it actually takes to get through, but the general rule of thumb is to be brave on the brakes, approach from the left, but with the car traveling to the right, drive as straight as you can through the chicane, and juggle the brake and the gas while changing down to second gear for where those Michelin logos are, uh, because you want to be doing about 70 kilometers an hour, that's your target speed, and you will be doing just over 210 when you enter the braking zone. The hard part of this next section is juggling the, the gas and the brake because you're trying to get through towards the dipper. Now it's going to look cool for your screenshots uh, collection having your Commodore going through here with the rear wheels off the ground, but you only put the power down as soon as the car is straight. You want to feed it on through here, follow the rubber, and then as soon as the car is straight after that right hand kink, now when you're looking at that sort of view is when you want to put the power down. Now that, that whole section, very reminiscent of uh, Laguna Seca's corkscrew. Next up we've got this little left hand kink, and you don't need to be as close to this wall as you think, and in fact, if you try to be clever and get too close, you'll end up doing what Chaz Mostert did and end up being like in a pinball machine. And what happened was Mostert clipped the wall just here, speared across here, hit the wall here, bounced back across this liquid molly sign, rode along this concrete wall like he was in a Tony Hawk's Pro Skater game, took out this Marshall's post, and then came to a stop just here at Forest Elbow, which is actually the next corner we're going to visit. So this is Forest Elbow. Uh, coming in here is tricky because other than the S's, this is the only part of the lap where you're going to have your front tire off the ground. If you're in too hot, the car won't turn, and if it does turn, you've cooked your right front even more than you want to. But we'll get to tire wear and lap times in a bit for race stints. So get a dab of brake on uh, as you come through the, uh, the right-handed just where Mostert binned it and you want to ride the brake down, get down into second gear and you want to be on the outside, well, maybe roughly more here to get the turn in 
and then let the car drift to the right hand side. Now where the, uh, the Falcon tyres wall ends, there used to be a tyre wall here. And what happened in uh, the top 10 shootout in one of the races, I can't remember what year it was, Dick Johnson hit that tyre wall, speared off and hit this tree. But we're not here to talk about the uh, foliage surrounding the Bathurst track. We're here for this bit, Conrod Strait. So I've just moved up a little bit further on Conrod Strait and you don't need to do anything up here except get your breath back after all of that. The other thing you need to concern yourself with is cutting this little left-hand kink really, really fine. If I just move the camera up to where it is, you sort of want to come across, bring it back to the outside, and then bring it back to the left-hand side again. Ideally being on the left-hand side at this access road just here for the Bentley Bridge. And we have literally nothing to do until we get a little bit further up. So I'm going to pop into this vineyard, get a bottle of red, and I'll join you in a second. So we've come down the Coronard Strait, and as we come round here, we're going to end up at this right-hand kink just up ahead. Now the tarmac on the left-hand side, this is yours. It's yours to use, so I suggest use it. Use all of it, and keep your foot down. Get the car turning in such a way that you're on the right-hand side of the track for the chicane just in the distance there, called the Chase. Now the track used to carry straight on here, up towards that Liquid Molly Bridge in the distance. But in 1987 they changed the track to what it, you see here now because the FIA said they wouldn't sanction any track with a longer straight than the Dirty Gaho up the Nürburgring. And when the car is straight, get on the brakes hard. Why? Because you've just gone through this kink at 300 kilometers an hour, 180 miles an hour. And you're going to have to get used to the feeling of holy bollocks will this thing pull up in time. Your left foot is going to need to feel like you're putting your foot through the floor. So you hard on the brakes about here, even before this 200 meter board, the phone's vibrating. Get pulled up, get down into second gear, and then get your turn in. Again, it's all about braking early and getting on the power. So feed the car through the left-hander, get on the power here-ish, pull third gear to uh, maximize your traction and it will help you to get your foot down a little bit further without causing the back end to spin out and with a sheer amount of torque that a VX Supercar has. You don't have to use the kerb. I try not to use it where I can, but we're in the home stretch now and we're heading towards Murray's Corner. So we're heading towards Murray's Corner now and like we did for Health Corner, you want to brake early, accelerate early, because like I say, that's how a V8 Supercar needs to be driven. So we're going to be hitting the brakes probably around here. Whether you pull fifth gear or not is entirely down to you. I tend to uh, pluck fifth just so I've got the engine braking, but hit the brakes, turn in. Apex is around here. Now be careful in the R Factor 2 version of the track because if you take too much of the inside kerb, you will get onto two wheels and you can roll it. So feed the power on, get as close as you want to this kerb. Again, don't have to use it. I do use it if I'm on a hot lap and then just power, 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 pull gears, and here is the finish line. So, that's a lap, we've just got to put it all to practice. Okay, so now we're in our factor two, as we're gonna actually go for a lap around probably the better version of Bathurst of the two. So I'm sat on the exit of Murray's Corner in a Chevrolet Corvette, and I'm just gonna drive slowly around and show you the lines to take through each of the corners, and then we'll take the V8 supercar around on full race fuel with a race setup and show you what it's like to, to drive properly. So I've now got to try and commentate on a lap of Bathurst while driving it. So let's go. So we're just coming out of Murray's and then we're coming along the start finish straight. There's the timing line and you can see the rubber on the track. So there's the 100 meter board. I'm just going to break here because we're driving slowly and there's the apex and we're going to feed the power on use all the track there use some of the grass didn't really want to do that but we're okay and we're back on the left hand side at that access road that i was talking about now we're on the mountain straight you can see the big bump in the middle you can barely see griffins just ahead underneath the u-bet sign down the other side i'm just going to lift off the throttle here there's the 200 meter board that's that bump i was on about 
And then we can break, turn in. Grabbed a bit of curve, didn't really want to do that either. And then to the outside of uh, Griffin's. Bring the car to the right hand side. Straight line turn three. Brake, turn in like so. Keep the car to the middle. And then there's the bump. And then we can bring it to the outside. Lift for this next corner, grab a bit of curb. This bit we can now get our foot flat to the floor through Salmon Park. Well, it's Reed Park, sorry. Now we're coming to Salmon. Here's the great turn. I think I'll grab the wall there. And then there's that curb. Just drop it off the other side. Get back onto the track. Turning in for McPhillamy. Here comes Skyline. You can't see a thing. Straight line it as much as you possibly can. Take some of the curb. That's fine. Into the S's. Like going through the, the, the corkscrew at Laguna Seca here. Just following the groove in the track. Follow the rubber inside of this wall. That's where Mostert hit the wall and binned it. Round here. Straighten up for Forest Elbow. Turning in. Take the car to the exit of the corner. And now we're on Conrad Straight. So I'm just going to speed up a tiny bit here. Back to the outside. That's where that Bentley Bridge was. Coming up to the chase now, so I'm just going to ease off a tiny bit, get onto the apron, swing it in, and now you're going to hit the brakes. Try the best you can to get the car pulled up. You can take a little bit of curb, but don't rely on it. Round the other side, I'll have short shifted there in the VX Supercar. Back on the power, get to the right hand side of the track brake, just as you see the rubber going a bit dark, down through the gears, Murray's corner, feed the power early, take the curb on the outside, and there we go, we've just done a lap of Bathurst. So let's jump into a V8 supercar and go for a proper lap around here. So now a lap in this Ford Falcon that I've painted in a, a kind of a a Pepsi Max crew type of livery, complete with names and numbers on the sides of the windows, which I finally worked out how to make opaque. But no commentary on this lap, just engine noise so you can listen for the engine notes, the braking and the gear changes. It's just a shame that we can't have a pedal overlay in DX11 R Factor 2. Now the car is running on full tank, and as the car is going around, I will leave screenshots of my setup. Now, really, you want to try and make the most of your tyre wear, so you want to limit yourself to about 2% a lap for longer races, particularly if you're doing a, one, a Bathurst 1000 star race. Uh, in terms of lap times, you want to be aiming for the high 207s, low 208s. This setup will do a 206, but if you do a 206, every lap your tyres are just going to be destroyed by the uh, by you know lap 10 or so, and you kind of wanting to eke it out as long as possible. It is an endurance, after, uh, endurance race after all. So I'm going to do the lap with no commentary, so you can just listen to the engine noise and the engine notes, and then I'll see you after the lap for a, I don't know, a debrief or a recap, but uh, see you in a minute.
So there we go, that is a full lap of Bathurst at full race pace in a V8 supercar. So I hope you've got a good idea of the lines to take and if you want to see what a whole lap looks like with absolute commitment, uh, I will leave a link to the hot lap I did in which I managed to lap Bathurst in 2.03.8 at the same time really as what Scott McLaughlin managed to do. And if you're wondering, as I came through Salmon Park on that hot lap, I did not hit the wall. I will. Uh, put a picture up on the screen uh, over this uh, bit of voiceover and uh, I didn't actually hit the wall which is the amazing part I was you know, millimeters from it um, unfortunately my computer crashed while I was trying to take the screenshot so I had to do it on my phone because I'm an idiot and didn't set R Factor 2 to record the replay in the event of that actually happening so I'm an absolute idiot but anyway I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you've learned something if there are any circuits you want me to look at and try and do a track guide for them I will happily do those for you. If there's any type of racing you want to see, but any series or, or whatever across R Factor, R Factor 2 or Set of Corsa, let me know as well and I'll get something up and give you a shout out for suggesting it. So, until next time, I've been Aina Milward. Have a great day wherever you live in the world and I'll see you all again on Friday for another video. Goodbye. <laughs>